peace and blessings to the African family and to all of our friends and comrades. Welcome to another edition of Sacred Expressions, a journal of art and culture produced by the Sound Gatherers. I'm Professor Youssef Nuruddin, and I'm your host for this edition of Sacred Expressions. And tonight, my guest in the studio is my friend, the very talented artist, Deborah Singletary. Welcome, Deborah. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me, Yusef. Deborah, um, we've been having a lot of fun <laughs> yeah. here on the set before we started the show. But um, one of the things that um, I was looking at just a few minutes ago was mm -hmm. the very strong expressions of womanhood, oh. black womanhood, that come through in your artwork. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk about that. I know you're going to do a one-woman show yes. at the uh, Langston Hughes Library. And that's coming up December 15th mm -hmm. and running through January 1st. Mm -hmm. And we want to talk about that show that's coming up. And we also want to talk about your workshop, Discovering the Artist Within. Yes, and I present the workshop under the title, Free the Closet Artist. Free the Closet Artist. Yes. Okay, so, were you a closet artist? Absolutely. <laughs> I was so much in the closet, I didn't even know I was there. And at, there was a, a point in my life when, when I was an editor for um, a publication, and I met photographers and we editorialized artists. I was stunned to know that you, you could do this as an adult, it just wasn't something that was alive and present for me in my own youth. And, and when I had to choose a career, I chose the administrative path. And, and I thought at that time, oh, I, I, I would have loved to have been so, an artist. So basically, you're a late blooming oh, artist. Oh, very, and still blooming. OK. Not I'm still just about to get to the peak. So you just started doing this in your 30s. I, I started, yes, I started about in my mid-30s. And so you're self-taught as well. I'm self-taught. I'm self what, what, what happened to help me to connect with my artist self was a session that I was having with a client where I was helping her to focus in on her um, life mission and purpose, which we normally think of as the career, and I, using the astrological chart, I was able to help her to right, I identify those Right, I to mention that, that you're an astrologer things. as well. Oh, well, you know, I was going to take care of it. <laughs> There's so but, many things that you oh, do, it's hard it's to remember everything. But it's not about that. <laughs> it, that's really coincidental, Yousef, because I was, a, a, as a professional, I was helping other people to connect with their mission and purpose. And at the end of the session, the client asked me what her mission and purpose in life was, and I was annoyed because I had told her. And suddenly it occurred to me that she didn't know because she was in denial about it. And I said to her, you're not hearing me because you have already decided that you cannot be that which you are called to be. You already think you're too old. You've decided you don't have enough time or talent or money. And as I had this, this revelation, this heat rose over my body. And I thought, oh, girl, you are so good. I knew I was getting to the crux of something. And right along with that ego feeling came the realization that that was true of myself. And I remember at that moment gasping and thinking, oh my God, what is it that I want to do that I am in denial about? Ushered her out the door and, had, and stopped reading actually for a year because wow. I, I had to get in touch with that. And when I discovered that I wanna be, wanted to be an artist, I thought, oh, well, now you're right. You are too old and you don't have any talent, and you will starve if you decide to take that path. But having asserted itself, the desire to create would not quiet down, and I finally had to give in to that call. So f f you also told me in a previous interview we did on radio quite a while ago that uh, you had uh, experience writing as well. Oh, I, I, you know what? So. I was going to be a writer. 
and I was fortunate enough to get a position with Unique New York magazine. Um, we, we published in the, like from the 70s to the 80s. And so I was known as a writer, but I always struggled with writing. I always felt I was mediocre. I didn't like my own words. I, I wanted to write like my sister Inez. I wanted to write like Toni Morrison. And so I decided that I would kill the writer. I decided I'm going to get rid of her. And I found making art and creating more accessible to my spirit, I found it easier because I didn't have to try hard. All I had to do was to play. And, and, and I gave up being a writer. So, so freeing this closet artist, um, the workshop that you do, you help other people to, to find the artist within themselves. Yes, because I found th the most beautiful way of doing it, of doing art, and that is to connect with the essential self that we are born with as infants and, and that we cultivate as children through play. And so what I, when I began my own process at first, I was overwhelmed because my idea, Yousef, of being an artist was to be great. I wanted to come out <laughs> great. And, then, and wanting to be great was actually what was holding me back. And I remembered, wait a minute, you did art as a kid. You know, when, and I remember in the third grade, I painted all the time. And so I said, well, Deborah, go back to the third grade. Be a child. Start there. And I started with stick figures and, and um, tempera paint. And I just played without, without the pressure of trying to be something. I just played and so I m create that space for other people to find that inner self which we are born with and which we die with but which is always accessible to us if we tap into it. And, and what I, the amazing thing you said about my finding my, my artist self was I found the writer self. Again, because mm -hmm. I found that, that that way of being spontaneous and free and open and, and approaching it from where, I, from where I am without expectation was available to me, not only in art, but in, um, in writing. Now I'm going to see if I could do something about my cooking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about your cooking, but I know <laughs> that you have become a pretty great artist. I mean, you've, you've been in uh, shows alongside of people like the late Jacob oh, Lawrence. And you know, one time I, I received a call from the Schomburg um, Library, that the, what's it, the Schomburg Center for Black Culture. Thank you for helping me <laughs> with that in Harlem. And, and they invited me to be in a show representing the art of, of 20, 20th century black artists in New York City. And do you know, I thought, oh, well, <laughs> I'm busy. I don't know if I want to do that. And, but I decided, OK, I would go through that process. And I remember opening night when I walked in and I saw Jacob Lawrence's work and Romeo Bearden and Faith Rangel. And then mm -hmm. it was only then that I even got it, just what it meant to be one, to be selected to represent black artists of, uh, from New York City who, who worked in the 20th century. 